11.30, at 11.30, uh, there is a universal cry, um, a prayer for the, uh, for the captives in Gaza Street. Uh, so uh, they ask to stop everything we do and just say the Shema, uh, to just take a minute or two. In the Kotel in Jerusalem, uh, it's a big celebration, ceremony there, and they all do the same thing at 11.30, our time. So with your permission, I will just break uh, at 11.30, God willing, and we will uh, just say the Shema and continue. So let's go to our parsha. And our parsha is a new book, Leviticus, uh, the first the first parsha, Vaikra, it called. Now, uh, as always we do, let's read first the first few verses so everyone will be on the same wavelength. And then we'll start talking about it. Uh, who volunteered to read just a few verses uh, from Leviticus? Who would volunteer? Carl? I'll, I'll read. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, he called to Moses, and uh, Hashem spoke to him from the tent of meetings, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When a man amongst you brings an offering to Hashem from animals, from the cattle, or from the flock, shall you bring your offerings. If one's offering is an elevation offering from the cattle, he shall offer an unblemished male. He shall bring it to the entrance of the tent of meetings voluntarily before Hashem. He shall lean his hand upon the head of the elevation offering, and it shall become uh, acceptable for him to atone for him. He shall slaughter the bull before his shim. The sons of Aaron, the Kohenim, shall bring the blood and throw the blood on the altar all around, which is as at the entrance of the tent of meetings. He shall skin the elevation offering and cut it into its pieces. The sons of Aaron, the Kohen, shall place fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. The sons of Aaron, the Kohenim, shall arrange the pieces, the head and the fats on the wood that is on the fire, that is on the altar. He shall wash its innards and its feet with water, and the Kohenim shall cause it all to go up and smoke on the altar. An elevation offering, a fire offering, a satisfying aroma to the shim. Yeah, uh, that's, that's fine. So let's say... Uh... Uh, start discussing the section. Uh, before we dive into uh, every word, every verse, let's just take a bird view, see the context what we are reading here. So it's a new book uh, out of five. Are the all five connected? You know, in the past, we didn't know. There were some uh, critic, Bible critics said, no, this is a... Uh, they invented all kinds of theories that uh, Leviticus is written separate from different author. Now, look behind me, the chart. <clears throat> the chart is a five book of Moses. One, two, three, four, five. And... Uh, and the computer discovered that, uh, let's say Genesis, the first book, Genesis, uh, it start with Taf, then you the, the, and then you count uh, forty nine letters, you get Vav, and then you count forty five letters, you get Reish, and then forty five letter, forty nine letter, uh, hey Torah. Encoded in in a spa, in 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 a, in a special uh, arrangement with 49, seven times seven, 
49 letters bet between the, the vowel, the, between the consonant, Torah. You go to the second book, uh, Exodus, wow, you get the same thing. The Taf at the beginning, then 49 letters, Vav, then 40, another 49, so you get another Torah in a very similar fashion. You go to the book of uh, numbers here, you go to the book of uh, Deuteronomy, you get the same thing. So 49, the same arrangement, but in the middle, Leviticus, number three, you don't get uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the word hidden uh, Torah, but you get YHVH in, in a space of seven letters apart. Now, if somebody wants to come and say, oh, this is incidental, and uh, the book of Leviticus is not written the same, by the same author, so you, you, you know what the, uh, what the answer should be. Uh, the computer that we discovered only in our generation uh, actually proved that the five, five letters of Moses uh, are one, one block, one, one author. Uh, that's what, what the tradition says. And it's such an amazing uh, proof that, uh, I mean, you, it's an, almost a miracle. And it's a miracle that we have the computer that discovered it. A previous generation didn't know about it. So that's far as the context of Leviticus is part of, like tradition says, of the block of, of five book of Moses. Let's move on. Now, again, from the bird view, uh, here is talking about burn offering, but the context of the book are sacrifice. Blood, throw the blood, they, they take the skin, but you know that uh, this was only, the, as according to the Rambam, after the golden calf, Hashem saw that mankind, including Israel, need some tangible things, to, to worship him through tangible thing, then he, he, he offered them to do it by the sacrifice. This today in our generation look like a, uh, something unbelievable. I mean, we do, I, if, if, they be, if the temple would have been today and, I, and I, if I would go there and see all the skin and the blood, I will faint. But uh, in the previous generations, Thousand of years ago, this was the, what customary was customary done in all generations, all all mankind. So Hashem said, "Fine, I'll, cons I'll I'll consent to you after the golden calf. I see that you need something tangible, but at least do it in one place, uh, in one in a one temple. That's the idea of the Rambam. Now, so the idea now we know that uh, the 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 sacrifice themselves has no, no, no much importance. I mean, the animals, are, as much as the mental work associated, because uh, each sacrifice was accompanied by confession, by by prayer. Now, uh, so how? Why? Why? The question is: Why does the Torah prescribes so many sacrifices and so many different. There is a chatat, uh, uh, sin offering, guilt offering, uh, and so on. And all those sin offering, sin and guilt offering are split into different subcategories. Uh, why, why does the Torah prescribe so many different types Instead of just saying, okay, come, come on and, and sacrifice something for me. No, different kind. Uh, uh, so, in, in fact, the, the, the parshas talk about three, three discretional offering, which is a burn offering, gift offering, and peace offering. That's a, these are discretional. A person bring on its own, and uh, and 
two, two other obligatory sin offering and guilt offering. So why the different kind and what? But the answer is very simple. Uh, when you go to the doctor, the doctor wants to ask all kinds of questions, want to pinpoint your 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 your, your fault, the the, the 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 physical blemish. The same thing when you have a sin before God. God, when you repent, ask forgiveness. God asks you, demand uh, that you will uh, think about what you did. Not just come and say, God, I, I sin. What kind of sin? Well, you need to, to think about what you've done and to identify it and you offer and you offer different sacrifice. Actually, it's compelling you to think about what you've done. How it was done, by the way, at the entrance of at the entrance of the temple gate, there were court. Supreme Court, uh, stage, but sages were sitting there, learned people, and you, if you had a problem, you had you had seen there, uh, you come there, you ask them. Suppose you transgress a Sabbath. The Sabbath is punishable by death potentially, although nobody ever was executed apart from one one person, ever, but it's potentially. Uh, if you done it uh, intentionally, uh, it's a uh, you know, it's a uh, punishable by death by human court. So suppose you transgress a person transgress the Sabbath or ate the uh, non kosher food, a uh, special kind that are uh, uh, punishable by death almost. So you come to the court at the entrance and you say, uh, my sages, my friends, or my rabbis. This is this I did. What should I bring offering to 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 atone for that? Now they sit you, they sit and, and ask you uh, way, wait a minute. Have you were you full aware of it, of the scene, or you did it you did it intentionally or unintentionally? And you say, no, I did it unintentionally. So you, they ask you. Well, wait a minute. Uh, did, did, uh, are you aware of the law, or you forgot the law when you said un unintentionally? So you say, "I know it, but I forgot it," or you say, "You know, I, I never, I never learned about Shabbat. I, I was a, I was a grow, I grew up in a different circumstances. I never learned about it. Now I know." So they keep the deep digging. Did you know? Did, did you forgot? Who told you that? Uh, are you sure that you did it? For instance, he said, I, I, I ate non-kosher special meat that was a terrible sin. Are you sure? Who told you that? He said, I'm not so sure, but uh, maybe uh, I was in a, in, in a party and they offered it and, I'm, uh, and I ate it. I'm not so sure I ate it. This one alone. Oh, that's, that's, so the rabbi said, in that case, you bring guilt offering. Had you, had you known it, you get sin offering. So you see, uh, by this discussion at the court, you, you dissect and analyze your sin. And they prescribe your, 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 your uh, uh, offering. Now, only, only the, the rabbis uh, know about your sin, but when you go to the temple, you keep, finally you bring the offering, uh, the sin offering or guilt offering, the, the priest, uh, by, by the priest, when he takes the offering, he asks you, uh, what's your name? What sin was it? Because in it, in it you, 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 and you repeat the sin in the eyes of, in the ears of the, of the priest. Now, let's move one step more. Uh, that pertain, that process pertain only to sin between you and God. Transgress, you transgress uh, like the Sabbath. 
or you ate non-kosher food, but sin between men and men. Suppose you kill somebody, suppose you, you, uh, you um, had an affair uh, out of marriage, suppose you this, this, and this. So between men and men, no sacrifice. How do, I, how do you atone for it? Our powers are. This is the burn offering. So when 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 you when you have when you have a transgression of sin that are um, that is not between you and God prescribed a, in a special uh, sacrifice, but any other sin, seventh commandment, I did it, committed injustice, I I did this and this and that, or anything that you know, was your on your heart between men and men is not corrected by by uh, by sacrifice but you can go there and still confess before Hashem nobody hear it not the court at the entrance and not a priest you just said oh, uh, uh, rabbis I have something on my on my heart I need to up to da download before Hashem. Okay, bring, bring, uh, bring uh, a barren offering. We don't want to hear it. Uh, between you and God. And you enter the court, the priests take it, you put your hand on it, as the Torah says here. You keep your mouth shut. You don't whisper to the, to the, uh, to the priest, oh, you know, I did this and this. And this. There is no priest there sitting behind the curtain listening to you because you, there is no need for it. It's you and Hashem. And that's the that's the that's our section dealing with. So our section deal when a person come to to the court, he wants to unload his heart. He wants us to say hello to Hashem, that's fine. But he, his purpose is he has something to pray. Otherwise, he won't be there. So he, he brings this burn offering. You'll see the term burn offering is a technical and it does not match the Hebrew term. The Hebrew term or lie is something else. Ola actually is on your heart. What is on your heart? The technical thing, burn over him because nobody eats the everything is burned. But but with the with the with the offering that you bring, you pull to God everything that might have been on your heart. Like who? Like Noah. Noah, that's what he did. Silently, he came to Ad Moriah after the flood and offered the first ever uh, burnt offering. In fact, our section uh, end up with a word, Reach uh, Hashem, an elevation offering, a, a, a satisfactory aroma for this quotation is directly from Noah, as the Midrash says. And uh, so you do what Noah did. Not only you, the Jew, everyone in the temple, when you bring such an offering, uh, uh, then uh, he, he just pull out his heart to Hashem. Whatever is on your mind at that point, this is what I am now, and you don't, you hardly even pray anything. Just sit down, Hashem, read my heart. But you think about what what you want to achieve. To, what you want to unload. Ola, what is in Hebrew, what is on your heart? Ola, over, over your heart. What is, so it technically it's burn offering, but that uh, missing the point, mistranslation. Now, having said that, I want to one more question. You are suppose you are an, as a Noahide, you enter the temple and you hear the 
and you hear the Levite singing, and you say the Shema. Ten more minutes, you say the Shema. You hear the the, uh, the people of Israel sitting in front of you because whoever is is commanded and more commandment sit up front. So Israel sit up front of you because they have more commandment. The Levites sit up front of Israel because they have more command. And the priests that sit really up front because they have more commandment than anybody else. So the north, right? You have a seat uh, 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 behind Israel. You, uh, you have, but you respect those who have more commandment in front of you. But uh, that's as misleading. It doesn't mean that whoever has more commandment is more important to God. Question is, a no, a, a enormous impact question. Can now Noah, you as a Noahide, I said, yeah, a, a burn offering you certainly can bring, you bring because Noah did it. And that was majority, the majority of the offering in the temple was done uh, uh, those burn offering. They were the majority, vast majority of the offering brought from Jews and non-Jews. Question is, can a Noahide bring gift, a sin offering and guilt offering like, like Israel? Why, if I transgress something that uh, I feel like uh, I, I want to connect closer to 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 a to, to a little more. I I am committed a grave sin. Uh, and uh, I want to atone for it. Can I bring sin offering? There is a debate in the Talmud between two rabbis, two giants of Allah, Rabbi Akiva. And Rabbi Yosef Glee, this, this is the second century. This is just as the Talmud was formed. The Mishnah was written, and the Talmud is now being formed, second century. The Talmud is actually a discussion of the Mishnah. That for 100 years, it was orally done, and then it was also written down in the sixth century, the fourth, sixth century. But now, the, the giant of the Mishnah, Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yosef Aglili, each one of them is so giant that everyone, every, wherever you see the name, Allah is like them. The question, the debate is, can idolaters, not Noah, can idolaters come and offer sin offering? A person who is known to be idol worshiper, a Roman, he come to he come to Roman legion. He come to to the temple. Well, he want to also get sin offering. Do we accept it or not? Rabbi Akiva, who was a zero, and of course he uh, historically there is a reason for his posture. Uh, he said no. Uh, we don't we don't we take we don't take sin offering and gift offering from from non jews Come Rabbi Yosef Glili, who is a giant no less. Every, everywhere you see the name is Allah Iklakim. And he said, No, what do you mean? If a gentile come, uh, my idol worshiper, remind me, remind you. If he comes with a pure heart, and he, he says, he come to Hashem and want to, to, to offer a sin offering and a guilt offering, why not? Surely we should take from him. So here's a debate between the two giants that ironically, it was, it was customary to follow Rabbi Akiva. The Rambam probably followed it. 
but <coughs> the la uh, later poskim told of, of more you know, a generation closer to us, they say, no, no, the halacha is like Rabbi Yossi Aglili. Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Avadia Bartanura, for instance, he passed that fifth, sixth century, 16th century in Europe. So he, he writes, uh, and uh, he is a giant, and he says, no, I, I, I think that Rabbi Yossi Aglili was right. So today, of course, uh, it's everything is limbo, but, and we don't have, it's not practical, we, don't, we, don't, we are not gonna, there is no temple to bring offering, but as we learn to our potentially, we should know, and you should know, that probably Allah has said that uh, there is nothing wrong for Nohai, if he decides so, to bring voluntarily even even gift offering or sin offering is not obligated, but he can. They will accept it and offer and offer it in 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 a style in the process in, uh, dictated by the law of gift offering. So let's say uh, so is a door hide sitting there. You are part of the service. You are not an observer. Now let's uh, uh, let's move uh, move to the parsha. I think we have two minutes, two more minutes to two thirty. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's move to the parsha. And the parsha, uh, I'll go to the first verse, and I read the verse for you again. It's a very strange verse. Nothing like that in the entire Torah. The book starts like this. And he called Moses. And Hashem talked to him from, from, from the temple. What a minute. What's going on here? He called Moses. And then Hashem talked to him. Our two, our two speakers here. Who called? And why, why that is... Uh, the, the, the Torah should, they could say, Hashem called and talk. But he called, no, nameless. And then it says, Hashem talked to him. Okay, the time is coming now to 2.30 or in the morning. So the Shema means here of Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem is now there are many explanations, but one explanation, Hashem, Hashem is now our God. Why HVH? We know him. Hashem had one day, all nations will know Hashem. And uh, so that's a Shema, that's one explanation of the Shema, according to Rashi. So that we're going to say right now, uh, in the Kotel, Jerusalem, so they, everybody said, now, if you want to follow me, Shema Israel, Hashem Elokein, or Hashem Echad. Uh, so we say it is a prayer for the captives uh, that suffering, terrible suffering, their babies, girls who are raped, uh, girls who are already pregnant, they're tortured, slave, sex slave, actually. And uh, they kept in a, in a very bad uh, physical shape, no medication. The older people there get no medication, get no food. Uh, we know about it. So they are tortured, not only captive, they are tortured. And they are, they are they're just like, by, they are just grabbed from the home. They are not soldiers. They're, to, they're taken from home and uh, civils. And they grab him as a captive. Breaking the law of, of, of war. And they shout that Israel uh, breaking the law, of law, the law of war. Okay. So let's go back to the parsha. So this strange, weird introduction. Introductory verse. Let me, let me close the door.
I think that we keep it in and then that's you. And all times you want. Yes. Okay. So Rashi solved the dilemma by very simple. He said, the speaker is one. Hashem is a speaker. Uh, Hashem called Moses and, and, uh, and then he talked to him. From here we learn, he says, uh, uh, nice, uh, this is how it should be done. When you address somebody, uh, first call his name, make him uh, break, uh, wake up his attention, then tell him what you do. You know, don't, don't jump on him. Uh, so Hashem kind of delicately approached Moses. Why? Rashi explained what happened. Why? Because in, in the previous, the end of the book of Exodus, uh, the last, the last uh, portion there is a. Uh, uh, it says a cloud came out on the temple, on the tabernacle, and Moses could not enter. So Moses sat down, so to speak, and now Hashem has to wake him up and say, "Okay, now it's time to to come in." So he called Moses, and and he started to talking to him. So that's Rashi. Now, it means that the, the, there is an uh, implication of that verse. Uh, and the Shekhinah is now in the temple, and he, she called people to come in. Moses come into the inner chamber. The people of Israel and all nations come to the court, the, and to approach, to come to her. So calling Moses is also calling mankind to come in. So the king in town, everybody should come to see him, to pray for him. She's here. It says she descended into the temple. That's the picture. And now it took a long time to, to get, to get, Acquainted to the new situation, she is now on earth, and now she she called Moses and she called us. She called everybody else. So coming to the, so there is a special importance uh, when you pray to come to her, since she she since the Shekhinah is on Temple Mount, uh, there is a special merit to come to pray for her there. Noah came from Mount Ararat after the flood. He traveled all the way by foot to Mount Moab to offer his prayer there. And we, go, we at the time of the temple stood, we flocked there to pray. And now the temple is destroyed. In our mind, we go there. And uh, we spoke about it, that Noah can also, as a service, do the same thing. In our mind, we, we, we enter the temple in the morning, <coughs> here in the Levite choir that are printed in the cedar. So coming to Hashem to, <coughs> to watch the burn offering or to offer or to bring our own offering and to pour our heart. Hashem will hear us everywhere. But since uh, we know that the, the, the king is here, we need to respect the king. We need to, to, to respect the fact that she come here as a, as a step toward the Sabbath. Because uh, the final Sabbath will come, she will fill the universe. Now she, at that point, she's just entering the temple. From there, she will enter our heart and we still fill the universe. That's the Sabbath. So that's the calling. Uh, the, that's a simple explanation. 
the midrash that's what you you, you could the midrash goes deeper than that the deepest tell us a big drama here more the midrash says you know more at the time of uh, 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 at the end of the book of Exodus, Moses thought for a minute that uh, he's done. He's done his job. Look, he took Israel from Egypt. He gave him the Torah. <clears throat> he built them the temple, the tabernacle. And now that's it. They are moving to, to the land in, in two months. Three months I will be in the land of Israel, and I'm done. So he sat down. Everything Hashem told him to do, he did. He is done, and he closed the Torah. Because it, even in Egypt, Hashem told him, when you come out of Egypt, you will worship me on that mountain. So I did it. I gave him, I gave Israel the Torah. What else can I do? What else should I do? And he sat down. As he was sitting down, the Midrash said, he heard the voice. The voice was not from Hashem. The voice came from someone who has no name. Who is the one who has no name? But, and he called Moses. He doesn't say any name here. Who called Moses? The essence of Hashem. <laughs> essence of Hashem means, uh, the essence means there's no name. Uh, the, the, the God, or the, the God, you know, there's no, no name, no face, no, our, our mind even hardly even great, can understand him. When he appeared to us on Sinai, he said, I am Hashem your Elohim who took you out of Egypt. So he presented himself, I am. Uh, you can understand, so he talked to us in a way that we can understand. He has I am the self, the self, the self. And then it's next line, Hashem, you I am Hashem your Elohim, the, the attribute who took you out of Egypt, that's what I intervene in history, kingship. So he presented himself in a, in in a way that we can we can put a name on it: self, attribute, kingship. That's name. We name it. Here, somebody called Hashem higher, higher, higher than that, from a higher level, that as not even higher than I am. So who is that? That's the most primordial, uh, 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 almost primordial conception of Hashem, even above above the attribute, above the self. Remember, when he talk about self, attribute, that's only our conception of him. But there is a level that is beyond it, above it. And that level talk to him. Higher than that, higher than the self. What, what, what does it mean? What does it mean? Who, who do, why do I care about it? Oh, oh, we'll see in a minute. So there's a drama. Who we'll call him voice? Mo, Mo, he said, Moses, you think you learned everything you learned so far? You think you know me? You think you, 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 you fulfill your job? You gave him the Torah? Oh, just in a minute. I'm going to teach you something you teach Israel to climb higher, higher than, higher than uh, that what was even given in Sinai. Wow. So that's another level. So who says that? Rabbi Nubachye. Rabbi Nubachye on the Torah says that Moses not only climbed up in the, the highest level of his prophecy, but he saw the one level even above it. He saw the nameless God, 
the infinite. You know, he didn't say it, but he heard the voice. Higher than any other prophet, higher than even Abraham. Rabbi Nubach said. And what was the voice? What was the calling? What 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 did he hear? The middle says he heard the voice saying, Moses, Moses. Two times Moses. Remind us, Noah, Noah. These are the if these are the generation of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. So Noah, the word Noah appears side by side. Noah, Noah. Moses, Moses. Which is not incidental. <clears throat> because Noah, Noah means he saw the, the entire history, he saw the Sabbath in the future. Noah is rest. He saw the Sabbath of the future and he saw his own our Sabbath today. So in his ark, Noah ark, he saw no death. He saw, uh, uh, he saw the, uh, the sign of a uh, it looked like an eternal sermon. There was no birth, no death, no jealousy that was under Yudhev of K, YHVH, the Sabbath in Hoch Hoch. <clears throat> and he also saw our own. Here, Moses, Moses means the voice said, Moses, you gave that, you gave him, you gave Israel the Torah, you gave Israel the commandment, but there is another level. Uh, uh, it's not only YHVH, it's not only Elohim. There is a, not, not only self, but there is a supreme being, supreme, the God in, is un, undescribable. And that's and that's is now talking to 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 Moses. I'm gonna teach you how to come close to me. <clears throat> and he continued on saying, talk to the people of Israel and say, man, Adam, when you sacrifice, you offer from you. Korban and sacrifice to Hashem. When you offer Mikem, you sacrifice, think when the, the, the lower level of teaching is uh, that you when you offer a, a blessing, when you offer a sacrifice on the altar, you think it's about your own flesh. Is there? No, it's, it's more than that. It's, it's not that. It's that, but it's Moses, 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 there are two levels. That's a simple level. But the higher level is you offer your own will. You offer your, when you, when you offer, you, you offer your own self, not your will. When you offer your own self, uh, when you bring, let me repeat it, when you when you offer burn offering, Noah I bring burn offering as Israel, uh, there is no, no, no guilt here. There is no sin here. So what do you offer there? You offer your self. What does it mean I offer myself? That's exactly what you do. You stand there and everything on your mind, which is yourself, what constitutes yourself, your world, your family, your children, they misbehave, they behave. All the stories are on your life are there. You open up before Hashem. You open up yourself before the Supreme Self. The Supreme Self is higher than the attribute, is higher than YHVH. You're not talking about mercy and judgment here. 
There's no, it's not, it's not an issue of mercy or of forgiveness. I stand there pouring my, opening myself, my whole being to Hashem. Read me. Read me, Hashem. As, this is what I am now. Including Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said, you know what? Including the, the, the bad thought that I had. Not that I transgressed the law, even if I had bad thought. Including bad thought of, of idol worshiping. Suppose a person, I come to Hashem in that moment and said, you know me, I know that I have hesitation. I, 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 there are there are times in my life I don't believe in you. But that's what I am. What can I do? So the, the entire self you put before Hashem and you don't ask forgiveness. There's nothing to forgive. If I, if I, uh, in my own mind, I, I, I debate, I debate if Hashem exists or not. Am I guilty of anything? No. This is honestly myself. So I, I pull myself completely in front of Hashem, like Noah did. He didn't say a word. Hashem read it. Take me, Hashem, as I am now. This is what, this is what I am myself. And I'm standing be before yourself. This is a snapshot of mine. I, I had on my mind my, my business. I had on my mind politics. I want this, I want that. I, I committed this, I committed that. Uh, all the troubles, all my hopes, everything, all myself is right now in front of a ship. And there is nothing like that in, in the entire Torah. There is no, no sin offering, gift offering, won't even touch that. Sin offering, gift offering, okay, this is it. There's this particular law I want to atone. But this is nothing to atone for. You are standing before Hashem. And no difference between Noachide and Israel. No Noachide between Gentile. Not it, Rabbi Yosef Aglili said there is no difference even between a pagan Roman who come here in that, in that sense, if you understand what we tell him. You bring, you bring here offerings. That's what you do. You, you, you stand before Hashem to read you as you are. You can use the occasion and say, okay, Hashem, forgive me because I disagree. Fine, but nobody hear it, and you don't confess it be, be, only between between you and Hashem. And what do you what do you pray for? There is only one prayer on your mind. Let's see. Uh, let's go to the verse. Yeah, uh, to the next verse three. It will sacrifice him to his will. Here it comes from. You. You, 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 you uh, will, whose will, your will, and God's will. Which means, when, when you stand there like this, you say, I know I've acted, by, you gave me free will, and through my free will, this is, this is what I am now, including my sin including my rejection of you. That's my free will. And I stand now before your will, God. And I know that it's not exactly what, what my free will is not, really, not exactly what you would like me to do. But I still respect my, my free will. And I know that you respect my free will. You gave me. You gave it to me. So 
the only thing I play here, uh, the middle said, is that I'm quoting now. I wish that my free will will match your free will. It's not that I overcome, there is one thing to over to overcome my Yetzirah. I have Yetzirah and I want to overcome it. That's not what we are talking about here. I want to reach the point that my free will, my Yetzirah will match, will tell me to worship you. I wish that I will come, I will evolve, and I will come to the point that my, 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 my will match your will. Aser atzoni kirtzoncha. I, I, I wish that you will make my, my, you will make, I will evolve, I will make to the point that my will will be good as your will. I'll tell you what, you know, what he's talking about, he's talking about this process, we know from, we are in chapter, chapter one, that mankind is evolving to become very good. And when, what does it mean to be very good? Uh, uh, that uh, the goodness will do goodness by our free will, not because you're obligated. Not because it's a mitzvah to do it. But it's chobat alev, it's a duty of the heart. Our heart will be such, such a perfect heart we are not angel, we are not, we are still human. We have free will, but our free will will match, will match Hashem goodness. We'll do goodness automatically. We cherish life, we follow the Torah law automatically. That's our prayer. So when you stand there and you pour out God, I know, I know my free will. I know that it's not exactly what you wanted me to do. But God, I pray that one day it will match our merit to match your will, free will. If not me, my children. If not my children, my grandchildren. My man, mankind. Free will against free will. Let me show you one slide here. I hope it's still there. Is that prepared for you? Okay, look at this slide. The top line, the top part is is a, a, is Sinai. I am. Hashem Yorelokim, who took you out of Egypt. And there is a supreme will above the I am. The creation was started when Hashem had the first free will. This is be, be, be before, if, before Hashem co constituted the heavenly court. The infinite God had the free will to create the universe. Step one, step two, he formed the heavenly court. So the supreme will, will is, is the, that we are talking here. He is the one who talked to Moses. He never speak, but that was a part of concession. He came down and spoke to Moses. This is the voice that he heard from the supreme will. Now, under the line, now, uh, when chapter one says, Hashem, look at the image of, let us make Adam in our form and our image. There is a mirror. In the mirror, there is an image down there. The mirror is always reflected down. 
So anything under the line is our, our kingship, our attribute, our self, and our will. The will is the deepest layer in our soul because we are a revert picture of God. That's what it means. That's one of the explanations of let us make Adam in our form, in our image. That's the image right there. Image in the mirror down there is reflected and the deepest layer of our thought. You know what? The attribute of logic. The kingship is what I do in the world. Attribute is my logic. My, 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 uh, my inclination to, to do mercy or judgment, whatever I do, the ju my judgment. Myself is below their self consciousness. And there is a will deeper, deeper than the consciousness, deeper than the self. That picture caused Freud to talk about the, the super ego. When he heard Chabad teaching in, in Vienna. So there is a will be, be not above, not above the not above myself, but underneath, deeper. I am moved in my life more than anything else but my, my hidden will, my hidden will, my hidden will dictate what I do. I'm, it's unconscious, unconscious. So what I, what, what you, what the, when you bring this burn offering, you pray, let my will down below in my, in my soul meet, match your will. No meditation, no yoga will ever show you so deep, tell you what we are talking here. You dive into your soul, and when you stand there and you say, I wish that my, my innermost will, that even above my consciousness, will direct me to do good things without ever being commanded, commanded Uh, I do it automatically. I do it because it's my, my innermost will which will match your will. Wow. Now we understand who was talking to him and what is the purpose of this temple. Why do you need to go there? But in the building and the, and the offering, the blood, all that was just a temporary concession because through that, or those generations, people could 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 perform that that uh, prayer. Today, it's everything men mentally, spiritually. The Rambam, I call him the Rambam, and uh, of course we need to learn it to understand the concept. Uh, but uh, we now it's. Uh, 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 it's now telling us uh, in our journey, in our prayer, when we journey, when we take the journey every morning to temple, in our mind, when we offer, offering in our mind, the offering there, and, and we, 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 we stretch ourselves, we open ourselves towards God, take me as I am, <clears throat> without apologizing. Without saying okay, I, uh, uh, I, I, without even asking uh, uh, forgiveness here, just this is what I am, and I wish that my inner will will change one day. Okay, any question for me? Okay, uh, so I know that's a lot of thinking here.
and uh, it's a that's a Torah. Torah put you uh, put you to think about think about. It's not a regular story. It's a, a Torah given for generations for all mankind. Let's hope that the, our prayer that for the captives in Gaza Strip will be released soon, um, as soon as possible, free and safe. And that's really one day Hashem will, all nations will know Hashem and all the Torah. And we, we should, all nations will change themselves and, 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 and be aligned with God's self. Okay, have a good Shabbat. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Bye.